Hey, this is Ori from AstroWeb, and I'm going to show you how to manage attributes and then make an import and export via CSV for your product management. Um, so in some cases, you may not want to use the back end in order to import your products or update products, etc. Um, so what you want to do is you want to uh, make some modifications to the back end and then continue to use CSV. So here I'm going to show you how to do a quick uh, change of your attributes um, in the back end first okay so first of all um, we have a, a test category called shoes and I want to make a new attribute called laces I want to specify which shoes have laces and which do not for example okay these have laces um, so uh, what I want to do first of all I want to go to the actual attributes themselves okay so I'm gonna go to stores and I'm going to go to product attributes and I'm gonna add a new attribute called laces I'm clicking on add new and I'm gonna add one called laces laces and I'm gonna specify what kind of uh, field it is it can the admin input just freehand just write whatever they want can they select from a drop down is it a radio button etc so in this case we're just gonna do it use a drop down and specify the values of it does have laces or does not so I'm gonna add um, and I'm not gonna require the the uh, admin to fill out this information okay so I'm gonna type in yes is the first option and then no and here you can specify if you have different store views or different languages maybe French Chinese etc you can specify what the translation will be here but in this case I'm um, just gonna keep everything default if you don't specify they'll use the default admin ones okay so here I specified four laces I can either fill up yes or no and it is not required <clears throat> okay, so now I'm going to use the internal code, just do a basically lower cases um, as the same thing right here. This is just a unique system. Do I want to specify if it's uh, this attribute is for a uh, global, is it uh, changeable based on store view, based on my languages, based on my website, etc. So typically, um, th this will I, I want to do store view, but this will kind of depend on how your store is set up. Okay. Um, and let's let's move on to the next thing okay uh, it is definitely not a unique value it could be um, you know different for every product right so manage labels um, again this is the same thing if I do have a different languages I want to fill this up okay so here I'm just gonna call it laces now storefront properties um, we're not gonna get too much in detail but what this does is it allows you to uh, specify how the attribute will be used in the system can this attribute be used when someone searches so if someone searches for something will this be in consideration uh, for a result okay will it be used in the layered navigation the actual filters on a category page so typically when you're on a category page you can sometimes filter uh, by color by size by laces things like that okay um, and can you use it inside promotions which is also a very good good one okay um, so pre pretty straightforward um, do I want to sh show it on my product page things like that so you can ask me questions if you have any uh, questions about these specific ones so now I'm gonna click on save and now I need to add it to my attribute set because if I don't add it to the attribute set when I manage my product that f that field is not gonna be there so I'll show you for a second okay so if I click on products and I go let's say to this um, Converse shoe right this one for example I don't have in my uh, attributes I don't have laces right here okay so what I need to do is add it to the attribute set or to the set of uh, defined attributes so right now we only have one attribute set called default so now I'm gonna have to go here to stores attributes and attribute sets I'm gonna have to drag it in to make sure that all of my products that use that attribute set in this case all of the products uh, will have it okay so laces I'm gonna drag it into the specific area I want in the specific folder right so if I want it in let's say the um, let's say content section I can add it there but in this case I just added it to the product details which is the top one right here laces I'm gonna click on save okay so let's go here I clicked on save let's manage the product right here okay right there 
Okay, perfect. So if you remember, I added it right here to the top, but again, you can add it to any folder you want right here. So in this case, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on yes, and I'm going to save it. Now, the reason why I'm doing this backend work is I want to set up a correct template. Um, I want to set up a correct template so I can easily use that as a master CSV, a master Excel sheet, and then work with that. And if I don't do that, it's going to be hard for me to figure out what Magento wants. So I'm creating at least one product, I'm setting the attribute sets, I'm filling the information for the product, and then I'm going to export it. So now we're, we're good to go to the export. Okay, so now I'm going to go to system and I'm going to click on export and I'm going to take the products and um, I can filter, I can uh, sh export all of my products or I can use this to actually filter some of the products. So let's go here and click on continue. So I'm showing all the products and now right here I have my uh, Excel sheet. Okay, so I'm going to go to, um, let's delete this for a second. I'm gonna actually put it into Google Drive or you can put it in Excel, right? And I upload it and now I'm gonna open this file. And now I can see the template. So now that you can see I have all of my products right here and most importantly, I have sample products and I have the correct columns. So I have the SKU, the store view code, the product type, categories, names, pricing, inventory, etc. So if you do have questions about any of these attributes, please let me know, I'll be happy to help. Um, but they're pretty self-explanatory, most of them. Uh, what you can basically do if you're not sure is go and edit a product right here. Go, a, go into edit a product. A, let's go to the product we, we are interested in right here. And then you can kind of match one by one, one by one for the attributes here. Okay, so product name, for example, right here, or attribute set. Excuse me, wrong one. Okay, so um, attribute set default. This is attribute set. Product name, right here. Product name is called name. Description, okay, so a lot of them are very, very close. Uh, now, a few other tips that are very important, and let's actually delete all of the products and keep one product to show okay so let's do this right here okay so now um, a few things so SKU it has to be unique okay it cannot be shared if you're uploading multiple products you need SKU to be unique um, so should a URL right you don't want to have the same URL or you cannot have the same URL key uh, for products it, now, other things that are very important, okay, product type, simple, configurable, things like that. Um, categories, right, you can see here it's in the default category slash shoes, okay. Um, and let's see, so we have here weight and price and tax. Now, some of the things uh, will just have a digit, so for example, a zero or a one, um, and not, not weight because weight could be different, but let's give you an example right here. Okay, so for example, this. So if you look at the, the quantity right here, there's a lot of zeros and ones. So typically zeros and ones mean um, either yes or a no. So let's, let's show an example for here. So is it quantity decimal? So if I go here to advanced inventory, I can see quantity uses decimal yes or no. So if it's a no, it's, to, it's a zero right here and if it's a yes it's a one so you can flip those on and off with a zero and a one uh, but in most cases a lot of these zeros and ones you're probably gonna want to keep the same settings so that's why I like to have one existing file basically copy or one existing product excuse me copy everything and start working with it in that way okay so um, what I'm basically doing right here I'm gonna set up a new product okay uh, and I'm going to give you a few more tips about the actual images. So let's set up a new product called test shoe. Okay, so that's the unique. I'm going to delete this actually. Okay, and I'm going to keep everything the same in the same category, same type of product. Um, I'm actually going to keep everything really the same right now. Let's just do test and then test description and etc. So I'm going to keep the price. So everything is kind of the same. It's taxable goods. Um, I can view it, it's enabled. Now, uh, images. So, if you notice here, um, based on the template, the existing product, you can see the image files are uh, represented here. And basically, Magento, once you upload the image, they'll put them in a specific folder. 
So they'll basically take the first character of the file name, this JPEG in this example, and the second character, the second number of a, the, the image file, and they'll put it in the folder. So one is in the one folder, and then in that folder there's a five folder, just to make things uh, more organized and uh, more optimized. So if you your images are not on the system beforehand, you're not going to use this type of folders. What you're going to do is you're going to specify the, the file name, maybe file name .png, for example, and then when you upload it, you're going to upload using FTP or SFTP uh, to a specific folder and you're going to tell uh, the system, Magento system, which folder it is. And I'll, I'll show you that in a second. Okay. Um, so let's see other things that may be important. Okay, so here's the laces. Here's the, the where we put laces equals yes. Okay, um, so you really want to use this a uh, correct. So let's say this is a laces equals no. Okay, so um, the attribute we added before now is in additional attributes right here. Okay, great. Um, so here's the quantity for stock, and I think that's basically it, additional images. So if you again, if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, most of them you can just compare the product edit or product management, but I'll be happy to help. Um, okay, great. Once you finish this, you're gonna go file download as CSV comma separated value, and now you have it right here. Great. So now we're gonna go to the system, and, <clears throat> and we're going to import. Okay, because we made a change, and let me just make sure one more thing that we have a unique SKU and we have a unique URL. Let's change the URL to test12. Okay, let's export again and comma separated values. Now I have my export, that's great. And now we're going to import the products because now we made changes. We're going to specify do we want to add, replace, or delete. Let's add a new one because we just specified. And you want to specify what what is the system going to do if they it, it if it encounters any errors and how many errors do you allow it to encounter? You can also specify to upload all the products that went correctly, the upload correctly, um, and skip the ones with errors. Uh, but in many cases, you want to completely fix everything before you do everything. But this is up to you. Okay, let's click on stop an error, and um, the the comma separated here is fine, so you can use the default. That's fine. And now we're going to specify the actual file. So let's go to downloads and let the system refresh. And so w once once uh, this folder refreshes and I can select the file, here's in the bottom, let's click here, um, here's where you can specify where you put your images. So if we did upload images that didn't exist, you're going to put them typically in a folder, something like var import or anyone you want on the system. And then you're going to specify to Magento where are those images and that's it. So again, if you're uploading new images, you do not need to specify the slash folder one slash folder two. Just put the file name correctly and then specify where you put it in. Okay. So let's click on check data right now before it uploads. And you can see that it checked one row and everything was fine. So let's click on import. So it validated correctly. Now import. Okay. Now the next one is it found an error with the images that we created right here. So um, the reason for that, let's go here, is this image, I did not upload the image to the system, so it could not find. So I'm going to delete it, and let's try to upload again. Okay, so I made a mistake, I saw the error, and now I can work with it again. Okay, great. So let's go here, um, and it did upload, but it did try to... Um, up, it did try to download the, the file and it could not find that. So let's go here and go to products, go to catalog, let's view the product that it was uploaded correctly. Okay. And this is the product right here. Uh, test product, right? Um, let's see here, just to verify. Okay, so it's called test shoe and we called it test converse. Okay, so let's search and this is the product it was uploaded correctly. And you can see laces is equal to no. Okay, so lace is equal to no and we have all of the information here. Here's our correct SKU, here's our correct, correct uh, product name. Um, 
So that's basically it. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, there are no images uploaded because we did not specify that it did not work. Um, and uh, so let me know if you have any questions. We'll be very happy to help. Hope this makes sense. Uh, thank you.